Welcome back. Robert Marshall never got a chance to tell his story. He was lynched by an angry mob just outside of Price back in 1925. In our continuing story of the last lynching in the West, details about Marshall's last days. For every crime, there's a story in The Truth Matters. Here's ABC4 senior crime and punishment correspondent uh, Marcos Ortiz with the second part of tonight's Justice Files. Whether Robert Marshall murdered a lawman, we'll never know. A mob kidnapped and lynched him in 1925 near Price. And this is how it happened. But first, a warning. Some images may be quite graphic. And I saw the man who climbed the tree and was sitting up in the limb, and he handled the, had him throw the rope up there. In June 1925, Robert Marshall was a dead man walking. Two young boys claimed Marshall shot and killed J. Milton Burns, a town marshal, but the boys never witnessed the shooting. Marshall fled into the hills outside of the mining community of Castlegate in Garvin County. He was eventually found in his cabin. The crime and its aftermath shocked the county and the state. Marshall was depicted as a villain. He was depicted as an assassin. He was called a, a murderer. You know, even before, of course, you know, there was even any trial. And Burns, on the other hand, was depicted as a family man. He was depicted as a hero. In 1925, the Ku Klux Klan was known to make its presence felt throughout Carbon County. Many in the community were members, including those who were part of the posse that came after Marshall. I don't think that they organized uh, to, to pick him up, but they were, they were involved because there was members that was part of the ones that, that pulled him up. After his arrest, authorities brought Marshall into Price, but the mob grabbed him from the back seat of the car before he could be taken into jail. Dad was uh, 16 years old and walked into a general store with his father, my grandfather, in 1925, and they saw a man buying rope. And they said, what's going on? And the man said, there's going to be a lynching. He said, there's going to be a necktie party. Hundreds of people, similar to this scene in Price, hopped in their cars and took Marshall to a place east of town. 14-year-old Francis Prince was headed to the mountains to work on the family farm. His daughter recalled what he once told her. He and his friend got caught up in the excitement and the cars and the people yelling that they, they had captured the Negro and they just got caught up with it. A man gave them a ride and they went with him. Former Utah Governor Jay Bracken Lee, a native of Price, was 27 years old at the time and was an eyewitness to Marshall's lynching. Another man put a the rope around his neck and then somebody hollered, pull him up slow. And while this fellow was sitting there, they pulled this Negro up slowly. And, uh, and the fellow said, uh, let him hang there a while. And they tied the rope to a, a fence post and let him suffer. And then somebody says, shoot him. No, let him suffer. It was violent because there was between 800 and 1,000 people that witnessed it. People brought their picnic lunches because they knew something was going to happen. On June 18, 1925, Robert Marshall was left hanging from a cottonwood tree for all to watch. The young Francis Prince, who never offered details of the lynching to his family, had nightmares. He went up to the mountain by himself and all night long dreamed of, of lynchings and hangings. And, uh, it, it was very frightening to them. An hour later, a photographer made copies and sold pictures of the hanging for 25 cents. Postcards were 50 cents. At that point then became quite concerned about the fact that the lynching would bring negative attention to the state of Utah and particularly to the town of Price and the residents of Carbon County. Then Governor George Dern was horrified and believed the lynching would tarnish Utah's image. He called for an investigation. The newspapers announced the arrest of 11 Carbon County citizens. They were called Carbon County's finest citizens. From the outset, there was a wall of silence. The sheriff deputies who were there claimed they didn't know who was responsible. A grand jury was convened and 125 people were called to testify. One of those was future Governor Lee. But almost every one of them were, were friends of mine to some degree. And the only excuse I had given him, I said, there were so many people out there that I might make a mistake and I just can't tell you who. No one would talk and the case against the 11 was dismissed. Most everybody knew who had done it, but they closed ranks. You know, they, they closed ranks. They did not identify anyone.
Dr. Lacey, who grew up in Price, wrote a book about the lynching. He was good friends with Governor Lee. He was afraid of his life because there was a lot of those big time uh, older guys that was involved in, the, in crime in Carbon County. After the 11 men were set free, the case was closed. There was no justice for either man. You have to realize that two lives were snuffed out horribly in that instance. And it, it never should have happened. It never should have happened the way that it did. And the lynching was tucked away in the annals of Utah history, that is, until 1998. The original grave site was just a plain uh, laying of grass and no indication at all about uh, who was buried there or not even that anybody was buried there. It was just grass. But in 1998, Marshall's gravesite changed. Wednesday night in part three of the last lynching in the West, the Day of Reconciliation. For the Justice Files, Marcus Ortiz, ABC4 News.